that's actually a huge question to, to, to wrap up this conversation on. It feels like in this conversation, we've said both tools, Terraform because APIs are getting better and Ansible because you know, providers are getting better. They're slowly converging on each other. Is it possible just to pick a tool or as network engineers, is it best to know both Terraform and Ansible? So with Ansible, uh, Ansible is able to get you the majority of the way there. It may, may take some time and you can also interact. One of the things that I'm seeing is that you can actually do Terraform from Ansible. So you can set up your entire infrastructure in the cloud infrastructure and do everything in Terraform, but then have Ansible execute that. So then as you stitch together your campus, your maybe your remote workers and your data center, and then tie that in with cloud, you can put that in a cohesive system of Ansible and work through. And when you look at it and extend it to the enterprise, you, you start to bring the network team in with the rest of the teams to say, all right, here's a tool that we all can use, speak the same language and look at and be able to provide a cohesive solution for your for the enterprise. Well, and, mm. and Josh, in the notes here, you pasted this matrix of different Ansible modules, a lot of which there's a, a rich set of cloud modules for Ansible. So it's not like you can't use Ansible for cloudy stuff. There's, there's a, a lot of things in the ecosystem that you can do. Exactly. There's, when you look at the ecosystem, you have AWS, Azure, Oracle Cloud, we all mentioned Google, but also have Rackspace modules, digital ocean modules. But the trick here is these, while they'll be item potent, may not be fully declarative. So there may be in the VM world or VMware world needed to look, took several hours of additional development whereas Terraform would really nail that down. And maybe you start to migrate, put everything in Terraform to start with, and then shift over to Ansible or just keep it with Terraform for what it does well, and then have Ansible do what it does well on top of that. Okay, so Josh is coming down on the side of, uh, no, you still need two, two tools in, 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 in some way or shape or form. It's just kind of a matter of where you choose to draw the line and where that line gets drawn is increasingly blurry. Uh, Ned, is that sort of your take? I think if you wanted to choose one tool to do everything. Here it comes. It would probably be Ansible. I mean, if I'm being 100% honest, it's a tool that is somewhat more flexible in what it's capable of doing, and it was designed that way. Mm -hmm. Terraform is laser-focused on building infrastructure in for uh, in, in a mutable way. That's what it's for. That's what it does. And they've deliberately kept the tool to do just that task. HashiCorp has other tools that it could hand off to in its own internal portfolio, but also they acknowledge that what probably makes sense is use Terraform to lace up and down and then use something else for config management, whether that's going to be their own product Nomad or it's going to be Ansible or whatever thing du jour you like at your organization. Mm hmm so it's it's interesting, Ethan, because um, I think eventually for most people, the question of whether they'll run Ansible, which has a long pedigree, like Ansible's got about a 10 years of history behind it now, I think, Josh, been sort of... Whereas yeah, my Terraform, mind goes to eight years, but eight, it's, yeah, okay. some, it's, it's quite lengthy. Yeah. yeah, whereas Terraform's relatively new, three to four years, sort of. I mean, it's only reached, uh, if I remember rightly, Terraform's 0.13, version 0.13. Correct. So this week, so give you a sense of the maturity of these products in terms of that's not a reflection on, and neither of these products have ever had the problem of traditional vendors where, um, you know, the first versions of the product don't actually work. So they are actually <laughs> products that work to a larger or less degree. But my general sense of these tools, Ethan, is, um, you know, one is more of Ansible is more of an adjustable spanner. It started out to be a general purpose tool that became much more focused on networking because there was a gap that was not being addressed by others. And mm -hmm. it filled that gap to some extent. So the reason that Ansible is a better tool for more use cases is because it's a more general purpose tool. However, having an eight pound sledgehammer is not necessarily the right tool for cracking open a, you know, a cashew nut. What you might want is the right tool for the job, right? 
And uh, if you're, and in my way of thinking, what I actually want is a nut machine that'll just crack them all for me. Or maybe what I really want is a bag of nuts that I can buy from the supermarket. I well, don't actually want to crack and them. Going back to your earlier point, Greg, I think you think the nut machine is going to come from the vendors and be a specialized SDN tool designed for platform, uh, something more like that. So I think it runs, I think the SDN platforms run two spec, run a spectrum from the right hand side, which is which Cisco seems to be the leading proponent of, which is you buy our SDN controller, you buy our custom hardware, we use our custom protocols. And here's where the levers are. And yes, we've got an API, but we don't really support it. We don't really want you using it. And that's one vision of the future of SDN. Uh, and that platform, however, that platform such as Cisco's SD Access does everything, does code updates, it does configuration updates, it does winds in third party tools, brings in the SecureX, eight different security products start to bind into that one platform, you know, so they become Uber platforms, starts to sort of harken back to the days of network management software from the turn of the century, you know, in 2001, we were running HP OpenView, for example, an attempt in that direction. And on the other end of the spectrum, we've got point solutions uh, that do different things. So if you think about companies like Glueware, for example, who've got an engine that does everything that Ansible and Terraform does for you, but actually add a bunch more intelligence to it. So instead of you having to handcraft certain things, it just does them for you. The engine is tuned to be, um, you know, intelligence. It's got algorithms in it as well as the templates, as well yeah, as the There ends up being yeah. parts of the workflow that you can take for granted that are going to work the way you expect them to and the way you need them to without you having to custom build that logic and intelligence into it. Yeah. And so Glueware still needs you to do a lot of configuration work. And then over here is Terraform and Ansible, which is like a box of Lego bricks that yeah. you can mm -hmm. sort of assemble. Yeah, yeah. And the only challenge there is the question is, is a box of Lego bricks concept maybe doing it a disservice? Because there are certainly commercial products and people operating hugely profitable commercial businesses. Um, so it's not necessarily saying that Lego blocks are cheap and plasticky, but at the other end of the spectrum, you know, across that spectrum of handcrafted to custom, you know, to a vertically integrated, there's a, a spectrum of choices that customers have to make, people need to make. And I'm not sure that it's at all clear that people are understanding there's middle ground in here. So you've got your Alkiras, you've got your Gluewares, you've got your Abstras, you've got um, all the SD-WAN controllers from the different vendors here. You've got NSX, which is an SDN configuration tool in its own right. And, uh, you know, there are, yeah, it, it's, it's a confusing market, I suspect, I think. Yeah, it, it is. And I don't think there's going to be any easy answers in the, in the near term. Um, you, know, I, you know, you had said, Greg, you know, two years was kind of roughly your, your timeline. I, I think all these tools are going to have longer legs than that. I feel... Um, single vendor solutions, which is what you really need to, to be able to double down on like what Cisco's doing lately with uh, DNA Center and SD Access and all the rest. You got to be all in on the Cisco stuff. Okay. Yeah, not everybody's going to be all in on that stuff. A lot of people are still going to want to be multi-vendor and, and want the flexibility to be able to do what they need to do. And so I, my gut is Ansible and Terraform and so on will have longer legs than that. And this methodology mm -hmm. of provisioning our networks and doing configuration management via these tools is uh, will be around a long time. Part of that is a discussion we've had many times before. Networks are snowflakes and you need some tools with flexibility that can accommodate your snowflakes. Well, you can build whatever you need with these kind of tools, going yeah. back to your Lego brick analysis. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't think, and I think the gap here is not that your network infrastructure is a snowflake. That's, don't make that mistake. Everybody uses the same tools and the same, but keep in mind here, Ansible and Terraform both have thousands of customers. So if your network was a snowflake, you wouldn't be able to use the same tools to do these things, right? It's, so it's not my point. Everybody's configuring them in a unique way, perhaps using all the same bits and pieces because of whatever yeah. the business needs are. They're, they're, yeah. Everybody the drives their kids to school, but they go to a different school. Therefore, your use for your car is a, is a snowflake is, is the sort of lot. Is my Sub point subtly there, different. Right? Yeah. You're, you're yeah. building something that the end result is, is subtly different. And so you need some flexibility there with your tooling to accommodate mm. that since we're not all building out standardized modules. Yeah. Uh, right. I think that, and I think the other side of this is too, you're also talking about Ansible and Terraform are incredibly uh, computer literate. You nearly need to be a developer 
or <laughs> have some solid programming skills and an understanding of the lot the pipeline so you'll need to be talking about git some sort of you know vision store vision uh versioning system like github you're going to need to understand continuous integration and deployment you're going to need to know testing to make them work and my eventually, general eventually i think you can grow into all that stuff but yes for the can. full implementation exactly but there's also a, but most infrastructure professionals are not developers most infrastructure professionals are operators um and the i'm questioning does the mass of that market does most people in enterprise it and service providers actually want to be handcrafting their ansible and terraform out of a piece of wood and a sharp knife you know and what if, I get, what if you think of it more of like flat pack furniture so i i want a table but i, I want to build it myself to a certain degree i'll get something flat pack it's a little cheaper than the more expensive pre-assembled table hmm. but it's not me carving it whole out of wood maybe that's i don't know if that's a better analogy i don't yeah i, I think of it as a range like if i'm driving business value by creating my own custom environment because I offer a software service to somebody else and having control over that environment is important to me and makes some kind of business sense, then I might want to use Terraform or Ansible to craft that environment. If I do something else, like I sell widgets and the software I use can just be out of the box as a service, then I'm not going to craft any of that stuff. I'm just going to go with SaaS from whatever providers have the software I need and not try to do it myself. So it's really, I think it depends on the the needs of your company, whether this is an important tool to you or something you're mm. never going to touch. Yeah. And that's the unique part, the needs of your company mm. and the, the capability of the people in your organization. And that includes executives, managers, <laughs> and engineers, <laughs> and how much profits the company is making. A profitable company will tend to spend more on IT than a company that's barely profitable. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, that's the uniqueness, not don't make the mistake of assuming that your network is unique or that your technology is unique or that you are unique. You're not you as an, as a worker are easily replaced with anybody else. Your job can be replaced with another job, right? You can be outsourced. You can be right. Right. The uniqueness would, is not. Yeah. I, we said something about how the infrastructure operator is or infrastructure admin or engineer is more of an operator than they are like a developer. That's generally true, true, but I would be concerned if I was that person today, because if you don't have that specialization and everything's moving to SaaS, then your job gets simpler and your pay probably goes down or you get made redundant. Mm -hmm. If you go down the other path and sharpen your skills up on something like Terraform and Ansible and increase your value, then now you can get a higher paying job, maybe at the same place, maybe somewhere else. And that, that middle, that operator, the traditional operator, that might be going away, basically. So mm. I, I, that would be my concern. Yeah. yeah. For, and for me, I, you know, I've gotten into the automation space about five years ago where I started to get into Python and Ansible. And before I've got a 20 year career in networking. So 15, first 15 years were working in large enterprise, traditional, you know, a little bit of artisanalness, try to get as cookie cutter as possible as well. But the it, as I left that position and moved to another position and came into this, I got the privilege of looking, okay, do I look at Python? Do I look at Ansible? Or can I look at something else in the market to pay money? Well, the pay money side of things at that particular position was out of the, out of the question. We're not going to do that. But then taking a look at Python and Ansible, I look at Ansible and I can say, I can hand this off to an engineer that is not a programmer. And they can kind of understand what's going on because they name the way they name their modules, and then here's the commands. It gives them a nice, easy, uh, cozy place to be. Of uh, yep, okay, that looks familiar. I could I can envision myself going into the CLI or actually taking these steps and doing those steps. Well, it's also interesting that a lot of tech jobs are defined by what specific skills you have with a product, you know, what you know, hands on, I know this product, I can do these specific things, as opposed to not having that. If you can put those things on your resume, sometimes those really add up to a, a position and a, and a rate of pay. Um, and and the, again, both of these feel like the things you can hang your hat on, whereas some of the other ones in the market have uh, somewhat lost. Terraform and Ansible, certainly for the network automation space, are part of, not all of it, but part of the, 
equation. If you know those, that's going to help you with uh, forward-looking organizations that are automating their infrastructure. 